my name is Pelin Tan. Uh, I'm a sociologist and the art historian. Um, also, I'm a filmmaker. And um, I work, I'm Turkish. I work in Turkey. I'm based in Turkey. And um, and I, I'm... I'm writing and teaching on contemporary art and um, especially architectural sociology. I'm more on focus, yeah. I have a connection with Palestine because um, I was doing and I'm still doing a, a long um, field research um, and engagement more than research um, with, with um, refugee camps. And uh, when I uh, first went to um, Palestine, um, my um, I'm also on the pedagogical board of um, of the refugee camp of Daisha in Bethlehem, and um, I'm also engaged with um, projects of decolonizing architecture. Um, so um, I was uh, working on doing a field research on re refugee camps in, in, in Jordan and in Palestine and Lebanon. And in Palestine, I was doing more in Bethlehem, um, Ramallah and uh, Nablus. And this um, um, uh, research and engagement was mostly working with um, uh, women and people from about... Um, uh, firstly, how to do research on space and also what is the public space and what are the issues. We conducted few uh, workshops on um, um, autonomous infrastructure, it's called. And this was kind of an um, art and architectural uh, student workshop that we did in Daishek camp. And, uh, and yeah, it's a kind of an ongoing um, thing. But at the same time, I, I was visiting so much, uh, West, especially West Bank, uh, Bethlehem and Ramallah. So I also work with Katan Foundation, which is a, a big institution. And there is an exhibition next year that I'm an artist part uh, invited to this exhibition that we are working on research. Um, and at the same time, I have an Erasmus agreement with Birzet University that I am uh, connected to Dima Yasser, uh, my friend, my colleague, and uh, we are doing together, we are planning some um, student exchange and workshops. So I'm engaged with artistic and research base to Palestine. I was focusing more on urban expansion of Ramallah and um, and how with the historical city and new um, housing settlements, housing projects in Bethlehem and in Ramallah, also in Jericho was expanding. And then um, I was also um, uh, researching and meeting a lot with Vivienne Sansur and Omar Testel, geographer and artist, this, these kind of people who are working on the um, rural and the landscape um, of Palestine and the um, commoning practices of uh, Palestine in terms of um, uh, preserving seeds, preserving uh, natural Palestinian her um, heritage of herbs. And, uh, and this is why my interest started to focus on non-urban elements um, of um, Palestine, um, not only um, um, advocating solidarity of Palestine through urban culture, but, but also um, uh, looking for solidarity practices outside of uh, urban culture. Uh, this is why um, I came across, I was looking to alternative pedagogical structures um, like campus and camp uh, in Daishek camp in Bethlehem, in the Daishek Palestinian refugee camp. Uh, this initiation, campus and camp is an initiation. Um, and this, this initiation is a, is a kind of a platform that a third generation 
um, and second generation Palestinians in this camp are running a, a kind of a, it's a kind of a knowledge platform, you know, unlearning platform. So I was engaged a lot with that. And uh, and then I was searching for like Viviet Sansur, uh, Vivian Sansur, she has a seed archive in Batir uh, Museum, uh, Batir, I'm sorry, Batir Village. So I was searching for um, this kind of alternative um, small collective and practices about uh, unlearning, you know, and um, I was, uh, uh, this is how I came across with Musa Alami Farm not as a as a place of farm production not as a place of um uh, a modern heritage but firstly as a space of learning unlearning uh, as a space of pedagogy um i came across to Musa alami i read his life and then i saw that there is a farm production place and then uh, i went to jericho to find it um i found its website uh, facebook and then uh, I realized that this is not a demolished site. This is, is an actual site. And no one knew. I was asking everyone. No one knows. Um, and uh, non-Palestinian architects. I mean, everybody says, oh, we heard something like that, but we don't know. Oh, oh we heard something like that. We don't know. So I went to Jericho to the uh, municipality uh, and asked the municipality and uh, they knew roughly, they told me I have to go to left, right, left, right, walk, and so on. And then I, I, I found it by walking the space. Because I think, because I don't know Arabic, uh, this was also my um, lack of, um, um, and that, that, that's, that, that's not an advantage, you know. I, 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 this is why I was not able to communicate Arabic. And also my Palestinian friends, also they didn't know where was it. So it was really a little bit difficult to find, you know. But then I found it. I found a space. I met, uh, I found uh, Musa Alami farm. This, this was the way. So the starting point was looking for uh, uh, alternative pedagogical structures, infrastructures, yeah. Actually, I didn't, I didn't expect that this structure was a, a modern architecture heritage. I was in shock when I saw it. It was a, it's a large area. 20% um, of this area is working. And um, I went to the actual, I, I entered the space from a main gate. And then I walked, I had a friend with me uh, who is a German friend working in Al-Quds uh, University and living in Bethlehem, who is a landscape architect. He was trying to help me he, he, because he was he's living in Bethlehem and he speaks a little bit Arabic. And, uh, and also he was curious with me and he was driving to Jericho. I didn't have a driving license, so I don't have. And so uh, he was with me and we went to like discover, you know, we went to, and we saw that a space where the daily uh, product is produced like iron, iron is produced, and uh, there was a fishing fishing pots uh, and so on. And then the people, we, we, we met the people there who was working, and they were so surprised that I'm Turkish, coming from Turkey, and uh, because they have this Ottoman uh, imagination, you know. Mm. And then uh, we, they helped us to, to, so I crossed the first part of the um, entrance, the production site, and then walked further and then I saw uh, abundant uh, buildings, um, um, housing units, swimming pool, um, symposium space, a kind of a conference space, uh, barracks and so on. I was in shock. I mean, it's a large place and this the, the buildings has high quality of modern heritage, you know, it's, it's a modernistic style. So I was really, I was not expecting that. So I, I was very surprised to see that. And then it came to my mind that, wow, this is a heritage, a real heritage, yeah. Um, I like the most the barracks. Um, it is, a um, I think, small, six, seven um, standard um, spaces. I think um, like kind of a 20 square meter or something, the space. And um, this space, um, I think so, used to be used to for, um, um, supposed to be for crafting, crafts, uh, ateliers, you know. 
And uh, I like them mostly because um, I think that they are cement of stone and the roof from interior is um, a specific wooden um, style of uh, roof in from interior. So um, um, I like it very much, the, the crafting of the buildings. And then they are strong, I think. And I'm thinking this um, barracks uh, uh, buildings can be transformed to artist um, studios. This is what I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> The complex is a, a, a kind of a, um, mixture of first and second wave of modern architecture. And it's, it's very specific to Arab modernism, I think. Um, so the space, um, the housing units, for example, with the steel works that they have, and then the design of the space, um, it's very um, referring to um, like um, uh, 40s modernity and 50s modernity. I mean, there are similar kind of um, architecture. You, it, it can be seen in Turkey in some cities and that is if it is lasted from the 40s and from the 50s. So um, so the, the 50s and 60s, um, the Arab um, modernist uh, style is very visible. And then the material, of course, is very connected to it. Um, the use of um, um, stone uh, in the facade, the usage and design of the uh, style of the steel um, gates, uh, doors, and windows are very, very special, I think. And, and it's referring to this um, area. And um, the plan of the space, um, it is like you see very quickly in the middle is a, a swimming pool. And then there is a Musa Alami farm, there is a, uh, a Musa Alami house, the other house, the production, product, productive spaces, the large empty spaces where the students were practicing. You can see it in the historical video about that. So everything of uh, that is like the, the layout, it's very much um, well um, organized. And uh, it um, you don't see any intensity you can, if you walk from the swimming pool to the barracks, from the housing area, from there, you, you see a kind of a very um, human scale, a kind of a um, large, I, I, this was my feeling, you know, is a personal feeling. Um, always, it's a kind of, a, I, I remember my summer, um, the, layout, the layout of my uh, uh, summer cooperative houses where my family are living. It's a human scale, largely well designed. There is many spaces in between, and uh, and you see that there is a lot of other kind of. Um, you sense that there was a lot of green spaces and production plants. I mean, you have the feeling, you know. Um, this is why, uh, for me, it's a kind of a modernist utopia. I I feel. And um, I feel also the, the the material is very strong. That means it can be renovated and uh, use it uh, immediately. You know. I think um, what we got from the archival research uh, with Dima Yasser, my colleague, and um, maybe she can give also even more architectural input into that, but. Um, I think according to production, uh, there are other kind of factory spaces has been produced. And then um, there is a, uh, near the um, uh, swimming pool, there is a large space that is transformed and renovated um, as a conference seminar hall uh, that has um, um, all facilities inside. And I was conducting my teaching inside. I think this has been done recently, um, maybe in last um, six, seven years, this renovation. And then, um, so I think uh, through addition in the 70s, 80s, and then in 2000, um, continuously, it was renovated and uh, added new building. But the north side of the, I could say that the north side, not from the highway, but to the Jericho side, 
This side is untouched. Um, and there are some building from the 50s, 60s is untouched. I mean, it needs renovation. So um, it's degraded. Um, and the, the renovation and addition has been um, um, more according to some terms, you know. And uh, yes, uh, Dima Yasser, um, in her drawings with the students, they are um, identifying which part is is done when, you know, from the material and from the from the usage they are able to identify. So we did that in our article actually, yeah. What we see is that I think some of the housings, few of them are, I, I saw last time in 2019, December, one of the housings that we see, the, the picture that we have and so on, um, are one of them is in use. Um, I think maybe the people who are working there is using it. The seminar uh, conference room is in use. And uh, the library of Musa Alami, the house of Musa Alami, it still has the library and so on. Some of them are in the in the um, archive, but it's still. And then the main entrance, when you enter from the highway part, there is a um, uh, administrative uh, place, and this administrative building is still is used. Very, um, uh, yeah. We were there and we met people there, and there was an exhibition there when we were there, also a small exhibition and. Uh, and then the pots, fishing pots, and the production part uh, is is being in use. Yeah, it it's produced iron, mus alami iron, mus alami iron. Yeah. Because in Palestine, always we are focusing on uh, Palestinian villages that is being emptied or left. Um, or forced eviction, faced forced eviction after Nakba, or we are focusing on refugee camp, you know. And um, this is why Musa Adami farm is representing totally a different typology. It is a, it's not a building, it's a complex, firstly. And then it's not a traditional Palestinian village, it's not a refugee camp, it's a modern, large modern heritage which normally when i speak with palestinians they 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 don't even know and they 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 always focusing on rehabilitation of uh, re-renovation of um, historical building uh, because uh, nationalism requires to make connection with historical buildings you know this is this um, nationalistic um, attitude and uh, and no one really looks too much to modern heritage you know so this is why I think Palestine uh, Musa Alami complex, I mean Al Mashruf complex, is something that claims Palestinian um, heritage, modern heritage in, in in modern Arab and Arab modernism. Yeah, and um, this is why is a unique example as a as a scale. Also, um, um, its um, function, you know, agriculture. And learning spaces, you know, it, it this is why it's so unique. It brings together um, a certain historical moment, uh, which is not a refugee camp, which is not a Palestinian village, traditional village, but it is a um, complex of learning that was built, and then it is about not about urbanism. It is about agricultural heritage, you know, which is so much important right now when we are discussing about climate change and Anthropocene, you know. Uh, so we're going back into looking to agriculture, not in the industrial sense, industrial uh, outcome, but agriculture. I mean, can we really resume um, agricultural heritage of Palestine in in a more uh, connection with the recent um, climate change? You know, this is why I mean, when it comes together, everything is so original and uh, specific that even Palestinians themselves didn't really open touch about it. You know. Uh, this is why I found um, Al Masur very important, and it is directly um, has a utopian. Um, I think um, it can be reconstructed this utopian value for future that um, this complex can transform into a learning spaces. You know about nature, about the um, future, and right now uh, contemporary. Um, um, risks of Anthropocene and uh, how it is connected to colonialism, you know, yeah, settler colonialism by Israel.
there are some, firstly, there are some risks, yeah? So these risks are firstly, um, water is a problem in West Bank always, um, because water is controlled by Israelis. And also the landscape needs infrastructure and well-connected infrastructure. And uh, as we know, um, the settlers um, have their own um, gated communities. Um, and then um, the Palestinians, they have their refugee camp, villages, and, and cities. And this, this, this water infrastructure is not really well organized. And even though it's organized, it's very much um, directed by the um, Israelis. So this is a really big risk that uh, one day there will be no water in West Bank um, except settlers' um, communities, you know. Um, this is one thing. Second, I mean, water is always a problem. Um, and, uh, and and Jericho is, a, is in a place near the desert uh, area, um, although it's near the sea, but it has a lot of problems. So this is one thing. Secondly, urbanization, um, the fast urbanization is a big uh, risk. I mean, Jericho is under fast urbanization. I mean, and a lot of gated communities run by, established by Palestinians themselves because they want to sell Jericho as a um, summer house, summer spaces, you know? So this is a big risk that um, even Palestinians themselves can one day remove this place, uh, complex, and put villas there, you know? And those villas, and I was walking from the villas to, to the farm, you see that uh, there are self um, um, uh, private houses, uh, private houses and villas are every day they building. And these families are from Ramallah, you know? They want to have a summer houses in Jericho. This is a big risk, you know, uh, that Jericho municipality and the region, Palestinian Authority, has to stop and 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 be careful of saving um, Musa Alami farm and its land. You know, uh, this is this, and um, and this is the risks I think. Um, and the, the the positive side is that um, the Arab um, um, Development Society can turn this place in the future uh, a kind of a, um, artistic institution. You know, partially. Agriculture and art institution for future, so that can save uh, when it is when will be active. This can save uh, Al Mashru. When I was there Saturday, there are festival. Um, the farm is hosting festivals. I mean, uh, the municipality is hosting children festivals um, Saturday or Sunday. When I was there, I saw that. So sometimes uh, this farm is, uh, because it has many empty spaces, is hosting the children festival, something like that. So there is a potentiality to use differently this farm, but I'm very afraid of Jericho's expansion. Not only from Israelis, but also Palestinians themselves. For me, I think the first thing should be Musa Alami Library should be an open library, public library, first thing. And uh, it maybe it should be redesigned in his house, or one of those um, little uh, one of those housings. There, there were houses, uh, I think six houses or something. One of them could be turned into public uh, library that people can come and research freely. And there is so many materials; it needs to be organized. The archive is huge. And Arab Development Society is holding an archive too. This archive includes library, uh, Musa Alami's books, um, leaflets, um, posters, even video recordings, and so on and so on. So there is many materials. These materials need to be organized, and they should be a public library that is uh, that you can go and do um, al mashub um, uh, and agricultural research there, you know, and pedagogical research there too, you know. Um, this is one thing. And then um, I'm thinking that it should be artistic, uh, science, agriculture, science, and architecture, and uh, you know, interdisciplinary residency. Um, like, like people can stay one week, two week, and do research and um, host symposium and conference in the conference hall and even make a ex exhibition there, you know? So my aim was starting with doing a symposia. This was my aim. And I was speaking with Katan Foundation for helping for funding. 
and and I'm sure uh, Arab Development Society would like to uh, host such thing. And this was my idea that hosting people in Jericho in the city and doing two days um, conference symposia. This was my <laughs> future, uh, and then take an initiation that um, how we can turn into an actual space of art and interdisciplinary. Uh, research space with libraries and archives and so on. Um, maybe some more production can be possible. And then maybe um, um, in a, a designed shop in Ramallah in Bethlehem that those products can be found and sell could be very interesting. And this could be really developed with designers together with the Arab Development Society that can promote better their um, product, you know.